from my heart Ain't much but it's everything I got In this cold world that keeps my core hot And lights my way when I'm alone in the dark well, I'm gonna give a little part history But I wanna thank you for inviting me tonight and, uh, I'm delighted to, to be here And uh, it's sad to hear Brother Moore's story uh, And it's unique to him but we can go back and back and back yes. uh, to the 60s, late 60s and 70s, yes. where Calvin Green was shot to death mm -hmm. yes. uh, by a cop. He was up in the attic and he ran and the cop lied and said that he had a gun and he didn't have a gun. Yes. Uh, then uh, James McCullough's daughter. Does anyone remember James McCullough? Yes. Yep. He was the executive director of Action for a Better Community. He was the activist mm -hmm. executive director of Action for a better community. Mm -hmm. And uh, his daughter, Alicia McCullough, mm -hmm. uh, she was shot to death. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, this goes on and on. It is a long history yes. of, 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 of black folk being murdered and uh, of uh, brutality and abuse. Um, back in the late 80s and early 90s, everyone remember Reverend Graves? Yes. 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 Reverend Raymond Graves was a legend around here, and he's a president of the United Church Ministry, and I worked with him for a long time. Uh, myself and Minister Florence and John Walker and a group of other ministers. And in 91, right after the, um, the Rodney King meeting, that's when we started pushing for civilian review. And uh, we pushed for we met with the city council persons, all nine of them. Uh, we pushed, we pushed, we pushed, and we kept up that struggle for, for quite a while. But the biggest block against civilian review were two things. The politicians, in terms of city council, and also the police union. Because the police union at that particular time has a lot of force. And they have a lot of power now over the politicians because the politicians usually need their votes, although most of them do not live within the city in the first place. But the fact is what happened to uh, Brother Ward here and also Brenda Hardaway. Yes. You know, uh, the, 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 the cop involved, Lucas Crawl, claimed that she came out with mace to spray him, but she did not. She did not take his spray. She came up because she heard a lot of hollering on the front porch and thought her brother was being assaulted by some guys in the street or something. And came out with the mace in her hand, with the pepper spray in her hand, excuse me. And it turned out to be there was a cop there. And then they got into it. And then it, it, it was just a mess. But the fact is, is that we need to push for civilian review over the long haul. Because... This is something that is not going to be fought for in one in the short term. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get it in the short term. Yes. We have to look at mm -hmm. ways of strategizing to make sure that our voices are heard. We have to educate the community yes. and inform people that this is what needs to be done. Now, the Center for Dispute Settlement has a contract with City Hall to train people for the civilian review board. Okay. That's what they do. They do mediation, basically. They do mediation. Now, what they're doing is they're looking for people. This is the Center for Dispute Settlement. And this is like a part of the city? No, it's not yeah. a part of the city. They're an independent contractor that the city contracts with in order to uh, 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 train people who are interested in the civilian review process so they can have a pool of people to draw from. And although there's only just a very small pool of people for them to draw from, because not too many people are interested in being a part of it, well, you have to call Center for Dispute Settlement and tell them that you're interested in being trained as a mediator. And you tell them that you're interested in serving on the civilian review. All right, now, of course, 
I forget how much is involved here, about a couple hundred dollars or something like that to take the training. Does anyone know about that? Yeah, a couple hundred dollars to take the training or something like that, but that's what needs to be done. And I think one of the strategies that we can do is raise money to send people to get trained by Center for Dispute Settlement. Yes. And put our own people in there. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we need to do. That's yes. one. That's one avenue of approach. That's one avenue of approach. The second avenue of approach is the fact that at the same time it's not one or another. It's both and and more. So the other thing is that we need to push for this independent civilian review board. The problem with the present independent independent civilian review board, as Ted stated, that it has no teeth. Yes. All right. It does not have any type of subpoena power yeah. mm -hmm. to subpoena witnesses. But of course, city council will say that they have subpoena power mm -hmm. and they can subpoena witnesses. Well, the fact is, why haven't they done so? They've never done so. Never under any Democratic mayor. That's why you all got to stop voting Democrat all the time. <laughs> here, here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I know. I'm serious. Never waste your vote right. at a major party candidate. Right. Because it, it, it is important to realize this is because the Democrats, you know, they don't come out as bad as the Republicans do. But they hide their stuff more. You follow what I'm saying? And you've got nine Democrats on the city council, and not one of them ever apologized for what happened to Mr. War. Not one of them ever apologized for what happened to Brenda Hardaway. The, the, the chairman of the Public Safety Committee, under whose uh, 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 this thing lies, uh, Adam uh, McFadden. McFadden, has not come out and said anything about anything. Oh, yeah. Not one time. And so <coughs> what we've got to do are do several things. Number one, we have got to make our voices heard. And I know enough is enough has been doing that. What? So we need... <laughs> Get more people out on May 20th at City Hall. Now, what you have to do May 20th, you have to call the same day before 5 o'clock in order to, to speak. All right? We need you to speak at City Hall on the calling for the need for civilian review, among other things. Among other things. The, 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 we need to get, if you have not done so, on civilian review, a petition drive going to make our name. We need at least about ten to twenty-five thousand signatures. We need that. We need to be able to present that at some point to City Hall. We won't be able to do it by May twentieth, mm -hmm. but we need to be able to do that. What is this a petition for? Civilian review okay. to implement a civilian review board. The the other thing is what we want to do is uh, we want to meet. <coughs> If, if it's nice what at the downtown Presbyterian Church, because that's right across from City Hall, mm -hmm. at about 6 o'clock that evening. And then we want to march over to City Hall, and we want to make our voices heard. But that's not going to be the end of it. That's not going to be the end of it. What we need to put together is a planning and strategizing committee to look at what else needs to be done. Now, I'm not going to say this is the beginning because enough of enough has been in it a long time. But we need to get some of the uh, our black citizenry involved because they're the ones that are really affected by this. Very much so. We need to get the Hispanic community involved in this. Now, I've been talking with people at Rochester Axe. I'm going to be talking with them tomorrow. I think Rochester's Axe is Rochester, what is it, something, uh, it's transforming society, all right? So we need to get them involved. Uh, we would like to get the downtown United Presbyterian Church Justice Team involved. There are so many different activists and progressive groups around the city that we need to hook up together and to get involved. That's very important. So independent power, investigative power, and at the same time, you see, under the present civilian review system, once civilian review does a finding, whether it's founded or unfounded, you know who it goes to to make it a finding? <laughs> the 
<coughs> the chief of police. And it should not go to him. It should go to an independent, a neutral ombudsperson, ombudsman, whatever you want to call it, who will make that decision, or either you honor and empower the civilian review board to make that decision totally and in itself, and have them do it. So this is what we're fighting for. Yes. Questions? <laughs> so um, the, the people have to live in the city. Do they have to be of a certain age, or do you know what the requirements? No, no, they, no. They don't have to be a certain age. All they have to do basically is to be a, a, a resident of the city, of the city, okay. uh, and address them within the city, and to come and speak out. Basically, that's it. That's all that matters to come and speak out. But basically. The, the, the primary factor is to have people who are voters because voters have power. Voters have power. And, and let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. This is why we need to not only deal with independent police power, but we need to deal with political power. They go hand in hand. You need to be able to make politicians pay if they don't vote your interest. And so far, we have not been able to make these Democratic politicians pay. Because they keep on getting elected over and over and over again, and they take your vote for granted. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. They take your vote for granted. So you have a, a two-pronged approach here because of the fact that you have to organize, basically, relative to civilian review, but we also have to organize for political power and political justice. And there's a way of going about doing that. Now, when you hear the word power, people get frightened of power. Power is neutral. It all depends on what you use it for. The end that you use it for. So we have to bring our voices together in terms of political power. And if the politicians don't go our way relative to civilian review, then when election time comes, we vote them out. And we tell them why we're voting them out. That's what we need to do. Yes, ma'am. Question. Yes. Um, well, a couple of questions. One, is there anyone on the city council, even if they haven't spoken out, that would be supportive of a civilian, an independent civilian review board with subpoena power? Mm -hmm. That has yet to be done, and we need, and, and, and that's that, that's work that needs to be done. We need to be able to go to every and each city council person. Yes. And find out what their position is in, uh, in terms of this. I mean, are they are they pretty accessible? Like, I I feel like I've called I've called some city council. I mean, I I grew up you know knowing some of their kids, so I mean, it's it's different for me. So I don't know if like is that something we could do? I mean, can we can we just call our city council people and say, hey? Where do you stand on, on a, civil, you know, a civilian review board with subpoena power? Yeah. And then if like if the city council people are just getting lots and lots of phone calls from people who just want to know about this, you'd think it would be in the back of their mind, like, hey, wait a second, you know, I'm getting a lot of phone calls on this, you know, I may not may not want to come out in the wrong direction because people are people are obviously paying attention, I think. You know? Like it. You could even email the problem. Mm -hmm. email mm -hmm. I like that too because that's kind of like. We got to interact. Yeah. 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 We got interact with the okay. politicians. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject because we got a lot of hands and I see people talking with each other. I just want to share what it's called on. So, do you. Oh, your name is Jeremy? Oh, yeah. Did you want to just finish up and then. Done. Uh, okay, good. sorry. Good point. Sorry. Good point. Sure, I try to stay. Good point. So who, who is next? I think uh, Joe. Joe. Yes, I wanted to uh, point out your, your what you said about uh, getting petitions, and I was wondering if you could get all the churches in Rochester 
you know, all the black churches, all the Catholic churches, the white churches, to, uh, you know, have people sign petitions That's what I said. for, of course, the Civilian Review Board. And also, that as a committee, that we could go and visit the city council people and, and demand, we, we, you know, as our group and as the larger community, if we can give them the petitions or just to go and say, we want, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. I can volunteer to keep stack so we get the. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Is anybody taking any notes? Yeah. 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 Right. Excuse me, but we do it by by staff, and so if you raise your hand, someone else, you know, one I'll keep the order right who raises so their hand. Write, so write it down who's going to be next to speak, so that you know, everyone gets a chance. And if you've already spoken and someone else has their hand. You know, up that haven't spoken, they're probably gonna let that person speak for you. So that they're writing names down. So so raise your hand again, those of you that, that have comments that want to make them so that you can get that you can get your names. Um, okay, we'll start with the uh, I don't know people's names. Sylvia. Sylvia. Sylvia, um, Ben. Um, I, I think that's a very good idea what Joe said. Uh, going getting petitions signed at different churches that I mean that's a good source. I I one of the things I I hate to talk about it, but I have to. A lot of white people want the police. Mm -hmm. So that, that it's a, that's one of the things that's why it's hard to get a review board. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's I mean because the politicians are looking at that. Simonelli uh, three times we met with Simonelli and we also met with the the east side commander and the west side commander a couple of captains and some investigators and also the the two coordinators or whatever they call them of the police academy and uh, what came out of that, and what I brought very, very hard and strong on, was the fact that you've got to teach these young cops who don't live in the black and brown communities, but come into the black and brown communities on their shift and feel as though they can humiliate and abuse people. I said, that needs to stop, and it's got to stop. Second thing I told him is that in your training of, of these rookies, you need to train them about the racial <coughs> and context of America and Rochester and the perceptions of blacks and browns and the cops. Well, we didn't know that. That's the, I said, how can you not know that? <laughs> and, 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 and you and, and, and your policemen. Well, they said, well, they train in terms of regulations and procedures. I'll say, I said, well, I said, that's fine and good. But you need to learn how to talk to a man. I said, and a woman. You don't go up to a man and tell that man, shut up and sit down. And they do it. Believe me, they do it. They'll tell you, a man, a grown man, shut up, sit down. Get over there. I said, that type of talk needs to stop. You're going to have to start showing mutual respect 
for people that you are there to serve. I said, you're not there to police them, you're there to serve them. That's your primary job, and you're there to protect them. All right? So we started getting some dialogue going on a curriculum for this police academy and what needs to be looked at. And I told uh, Seminelli that we're going to be going for civilian review. I said, because you don't need to be making the final decision about what happens. I said, that's just like a fox. <laughs> Gardner Henhouse, come on, you don't need to do that. That's not your job, that's not your role. So that's where we're at with that one right now. Okay, uh, quick direct response. <laughs> Just to what she said, uh, that um, you, you mentioned that you have a lot of white friends who are, who are very supportive of the police department. No, I don't. perception when he went into neighborhoods because of the way other cops act. Mm -hmm. right. You know? Yeah. So I mean there's there's an argument to be made even to people who support the police. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Um I got Ben and Kathy and then you had another question. Okay. Um so in regards to the um, suggestion that we make um, um, voting out uh, Democrats who are uncooperative with this part of our strategy. Um, well, I'd like to point out that um, you know, with our current situation, there's a lot of things that um, oh, where the Republicans don't even bother to run. And the Greens have been doing better everywhere. Um, in Seattle, they've got a um, socialist on their city council. Actually, it ran as an open socialist. They just recently won a $15 an hour minimum wage and not the best terms. Um, there, this is a relatively good time for that sort of thing. Um, I'd like to point out also, though, that well, I don't think I've ever seen any sort of mass movement go with a purely electoral strategy and not have it be a complete disaster and everybody just um, stops doing things, stops caring because there's nothing to do except raise money and collect signatures until campaign season. Um, so if we um, decide to make that part of our strategy, I would advocate towards making that a relatively small part of our strategy um, and um, you know, incorporating those efforts a bit more as campaign season rolls around if then, but certainly not focusing on that now. Um, you know, it's relatively easy for a movement to get caught up in um, trying to get someone elected and um, lose sight of what they're doing or have people lose interest. Um, and a short unrelated note. Um, I would like to suggest that we all um, try and limit our use of direct responses to things that are actually a good direct response because, well, I haven't gotten as bad as some of what I remember out of Occupy, but um, in Occupy there were times where we have like a good 20 minutes before the next person on the stack got to speak because everyone was direct responsing everything. And, uh, you know, it's... Um, direct responses are a good tool when it's relevant, but they can throw a, a uh, discussion into disarray if you use them too much. Yes. All right. Okay, what I'd like to, uh, Kathy, what I'd like to suggest is when we do the online petition, that we put down all the relevant people's names, the city, board, Shepherd, everybody involved, and put down their phone numbers and their email addresses where everybody could write them through the email. Mm. So when they get thousands of emails and thousands of phone calls for our online petition, 
then they'll start listening. And emails are read. Um, I, uh, I, I, I get the sense of just a, a lot of a lot of apathy around me. I mean, and I, I commend everybody in this room right here because, like, to me, people who showed up and are standing are, are here right now are the people who are the leaders who are like, you know, we have to go out and convince other people that you know these these things that we that we deal with are important. Um, I I don't know how I feel about you know the idea of like we're all going to come together. And you know we're gonna we're gonna show them that we that we mean business. Like to me, like if I if I went out and I you know in the next like two or three weeks I managed to you know in my own time call you know, or leave a message for each and every one of my of my city councilmen and like everybody else in this room did the same thing. And we to me I don't like the idea of like relying on. You know, okay, well, you know, we put somebody in charge and, and he'll get it done, you know, like, right. you know, we all, we can't, we can't rely on that. I think that's how we, we get in trouble with our politicians. We put them in charge and think they're going to get something done and then, you know, crap falls apart. So, I, that, that's what I, I'd like to see. Personally. I have, uh, you good? I'm good. Uh, Ted, Elaine, Ricardo, Brandon, and then Ben. Unless somebody else has spoken. Yeah, you haven't spoken yet. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, two things. Reverend Stewart, maybe you can help me out. Just mm -hmm. um, confirm that this my, my assumption about this current review board is correct. You can file a complaint against the police officer through PSS, Internal um, Affairs, mm -hmm. or through the Center for Dispute Settlement, right? Yes. Then those uh, complaints go to an investigative arm that's run solely by the police. Right. Yes. Where pers the person comes in and basically the police interrogate you trying to trip you up and discredit your story. Mm -hmm. At which point, um, the, the findings of that investigation go to the police and to Center for Dispute Settlement again. Mm -hmm. They each come up with their own sort of outcomes of that initial complaint. Mm -hmm. Then those outcomes are then sent to the chief of police mm -hmm. who has final determination over what happens. That's right. And whatever happens, if anything happens, is solely between the individual and the police and never publicized. Right. That's correct? That's correct. Okay, so what I think what I think at the Independent Civilian Review Board in my mind is we have two lines, if you want to think about it that way, the police line and the independent line. Mm -hmm. And the independent way is instead of it going to, you know, the police for the investigation, there would be a separate civilian uh, organization that would do the investigation, right. would have subpoena power, right. would recall witnesses, view all the evidence, do their own interviews. Mm -hmm come up with their own outcomes, mm -hmm. and then I think you said an ombudsman or somebody at the end right. who would look at what the police say, what the civilians say, and come up with some sort of mutual resolution. There you go. Is that what we're talking? Okay. That's correct. Thank you. It's a good summary. Perhaps one avenue for the churches is the Greater Rochester Community of Churches. Um, so that's that's just a, a, a thought. But I, I like the idea of, of petitioning. And um, in our church, we sign a lot of petitions. Mm -hmm. So, but I but I also like the idea of having some kind of delegation and maybe lots of different delegations going to the council members and speaking to them individually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you respond. It's, 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 it, the strategy is anything and everything. Right. Th yeah. th that is conceivable. That will work to our advantage. Mm -hmm. So part, part of that, part of the tactic is, is uh, the uh, petitions. Part of it is talking to the city council person. Mm -hmm. Part of that also is going to city council and speaking out. Mm -hmm. Part of that also is getting other groups and other churches involved, as, as, as you stated, mm -hmm. and at the same time educating and informing people. Mm -hmm. So, I, I have a question uh, to your... Uh, I can push you on to that. 
I'm sorry, I don't want to hear you. Sure. Jeremy. I have Ricardo and then the woman who's taking notes. I didn't hear you. Grania. 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 Okay. Great. Well, I, I have to say about the, the ineffectiveness of electoral uh, politics as, as a strategy. Uh, have we forgotten 2008? <laughs> the effectiveness of that's how Obama got in there, whether you like it or not, like him or not. Um, so the vote do make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's important. And lovely went against the odds, whether you like her or not. So it, it, it can be effective. Um, we got the guy and the mayor in New York City. So I, 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 I hate for us to under, um, undermine the power of the vote, man. Um, if we can get the power to vote is the Republicans, the independents, the socialists, everybody is going to pay attention if you're coming out to vote. The Republican don't worry now because we ain't coming out to vote. If we start voting, everybody is going to be supportive of our issue. I, I know that. History has shown that. Um, I also beg to differ. We give the perception that um, like these white folks who um, like the police, there's a lot of people in the black community like the police. We don't hate the police. We hate the injustice. That's what we hate. You understand? Let's don't get, get it twisted. And I don't think this group is about hating on the police. We hating on injustice. You know what I'm saying? And I totally support the fact that um, about the groups coming together, man, because this city, um, unlike most cities, man, they got a lot of powerful organizations, man. There may be some eagles involved or something. You know, you got a lot, a lot. But I don't know how to bring them together. But that's 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 what we need to be trying to strategize on, trying to bring. Um, we ain't got to get now a new group. We just need to bring what we got. The church is, and we can't um, can't count nobody out. We, we're getting big-headed if we think we can count. We need everybody, man. And I'm done. the wheel. And one of the things I'm wondering is um, people who are more knowledgeable, than, uh, are there cities where an effective independent civilian review board with power has actually been implemented and how has it worked? Because I think it's a really good um, idea to, to know about the good models. Because that's one way of educating people. I just read about that. There, there was one. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, there are there are models for that. As, as late as uh, uh, Berkeley, California. Um, St. Paul, Detroit, Michigan, Metro Dade, Florida. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and a, and a, uh, a civilian review was also organized in Tampa, Florida. So uh, those cities really have uh, some civilian review boards. Now, there was a book that was put out. Oh, man. Um, it was put out along with the Kerner Commission. Um, it shows you how old I am. I'm trying to say it now. But it's dealing with police or something like that. It's a big, thick book that came out in the late 60s. You remember what I'm talking about, Ted? I don't. But I want to read You're it. You're a scholar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they talked about the fact of, of the need for an independent civilian review board in that book. I'm trying to think of the name of it, but I can't go. But anyway, yeah, there are cities where this has been tried and has been done and has worked. Sorry about me. Kathy. Kathy. Okay. Um, piggybacking on what Ricardo says. 
we are more than one and enough is enough, but there's like to reach out to other organizations. Not only that, to the churches too, because you, you sit on the panel. You know what I mean? It's support of the people. And like they always said at the Methodist Church, there needs to be a petition sign at the door that the pastor knows, you know, who's the head of the congregation, let them know what we are looking for out of our community, an agreement that we can unite. That's the first thing. It's like all those who are be on board. Be a voice to all the people. I got you on that one. Secondly, is that how are we really going to grow from this? You know what I mean? Do we looking to take an individual to say what we want to do? Well, we all speaking out. Our next step is like, how are we going to get the other groups involved? Where's our next meeting? What are we going to get involved? That's what I'm looking for, okay? Okay, petition, we can do that, right? How are we going to reach out to these other groups and say, well, listen, we're going to meet over here. Or if it's not big enough, we can meet over here. Or we can meet at IFGT. We need to look at strategize when we come out this year with this year. Now, we, we can do all the petition. But let them know we can come out strong. That's what we need to do. Alright, um, Jeremy and Ben, do you mind if Benny goes since he hasn't spoken? No, I'm just waiting. You wait, okay. Um, okay. Um, I what you were saying earlier about um, the um, apathy. Um, I don't think that's the case. I think that um, if you know, people may say they don't care, they may even think to themselves that they don't care, but um, I think they they care, they just don't see there's anything they can do about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, pretending like it doesn't matter to them all, to them all that much is just a uh, good defense mechanism to deal with that. Like, look at our voter turnout, right? I mean, like, what are we going to do? Like, 50% maybe? I mean, that to me is just hard numbers. Well, that. Um, to me, that's it's more like people realizing that whoever they vote for, it doesn't change what actually that's, happens. That's silly to me. Like you can say that about the about the about the the, 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 the level of Washington. Like yes, I, I don't vote for presidents because it doesn't matter. Like, but I always show up because the people that I vote for as judges or the people that I vote for in in county legislature in my school board my my city council like those are the votes that affect me the most. I feel like those are the ones that people care the least about. Like, they get so wrapped up in this drama of, like, national politics that mm -hmm. just has, like, no relation to our lives. It's just a, it's a, to me, it's just a giant joke. And all the stuff that really matters happening at the local level, people don't pay any attention to. And that's the apathy. Like, like who, I try to pay attention. Can, I mean, how many of us can even name who's sitting on our, who are our circuit court judges? I have no idea, you know? It's like, we talk about justice, but we don't even know who's in charge. So it's just like, you know, where, where should the onus be? To me, it should, you know, I, I look at it, it should be on me. It should be on us. Let me respond to you, Jeremy. Um, and that's why I brought up the whole issue relative to electoral politics, because you have to make politicians pay if they don't support your interest. That's, that's, that is important. It really is. Because if all politicians think is that they have your vote in their back pocket, they're going to do anything they well please. Now, for example, let's, let's look at this whole Brenda Hardaway situation. And I'll show you the role politics plays in that. For example, Justice Affronti. He, he, is a, he is a Supreme Court Justice, right? Uh -huh. He's not appointed. He has to run for political office. And he's one of the, let me say, worst lynching judges that we have around here. Secondly, Sandra Dorley. She's a Democrat. Now, she wanted to give Brenda Hardaway seven years in the state penitentiary. Seven years in the state penitentiary. But then she tries to throw us a bone by the, 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 the young black kids that that officer tried to make move and said he was going to arrest them and everything. Oh, told McCullough, oh, I didn't arrest him. I didn't arrest him, you know. So that ought to count for something. But you see, 
They play games with us. They do it, they do it each and every time. And I'm saying, and Brother Ricardo is right, politics do count. And you've got to show these politicians that they have got to vote your interest. And that they have got to vote for justice. They've got to vote for justice. Because Sandra Dorley, she's a county person. She runs for the whole county. And she knows she's going to get elected from the city because mostly the city Democrats. But it's the Republicans that elect her from the county. See, we have to understand that. All right? But the fact is, what if people vote for somebody else, a people's candidate, and not her when it comes time for her to run around again, run again? See, we have to think of these situations. And I'm not saying lump them all together. You can't lump them all together. But you have to look at the whole roadmap. And you can't look at the neighborhood, but the whole map. That's what I'm saying. I, uh, the, like for the, the, the voting people out, I, I just think that we have we have, we have a lot. I'll try to make this very brief because I do realize I'm, I'm commenting. But I, yeah, I feel like we have a ton of power if we just. Uh, to me, I, I I don't get this. I I don't get the connection of we got a lot more. We got to have more meetings. We gotta we gotta get together. We gotta we gotta talk to other people. I mean, we have a lot of people in this room. Like, I feel like we got 20 people here. If we, we all made eight phone calls, that's a ton of phone calls to to our city council. And, I mean... Not enough. Okay. Okay. Not enough. Um, I had Kathy on stack, and then... I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. First of all, I agree about the politicians. We've got to get them, you know, we've got to get them to listen. And Several, you know, every day things are changed because many of people are emailing, they're calling these politicians and getting them to stop what they're doing. So it's very important. And then 20 people calling, oh, please. That's do we, do we give drop of the, like, drop of the bucket. Drop but of the I mean, if I call this person and I talk to him and like I get the runner out, I know specifically this guy's got to go. I, I called him. He gave me the runaround. That's the guy that's got to go. I know. Like, like, if I don't do that, like, I didn't do my own civic duty. Okay. I, I don't know. We got to stay with stack. We really got to stay with stack because that's what keeps this in order. Yep. And exactly. I'm sorry because I just came out of order in saying that. But um, we do need to keep with stack. Okay. Am I next? You are next. <laughs> you are on stack. Praise God. All right. Now, first of all, I want to say, Jeremy, you're right. You know what I mean? I'm, I, and you said it's not enough, but it is an option. It's something. Uh, Reverend Stewart was saying we 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 can't afford not to say no to anything. So if there's something we can do, let that be. Let's do that. Everything sounds good. It's not time to vote yet, but when it's time to vote, we need to do that also. But the more that we can do, the better. You know, we watched a movie here a couple of weeks ago called These Streets Are... Watching. Watching. You know, and it was really talking about cop watch. watch. Now, we need to get this thing out there because it's so important. We've got technology on these phones that can do some things, y'all. <laughs> and I'm saying even from afar, you can take your phone and have something pull way up. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need to be watching on every block. We need to be watching these cops. We need to be recording. We need to be all the time. Just and tell somebody. Cop watch, you know, so much so we keep saying it and saying it and saying it. Look, it'll catch on fire. Just the same way them boys, somebody pulled the pants down, everybody pulled the pants down. You know what I mean? It becomes a trend. So if we start cop watch, it will become a trend. Even the t-shirts. Enough is enough is out there because of those teachers. Believe me, somebody keeps saying, wow, did you see that t-shirt? Wow, did you see that t-shirt? Even that. We can make we can make T-shirts that say "Cop Watch." Let the cops see us wearing a shirt that says "Cop Watch." We're watching you all the time, day and night, twenty four seven. So it's all all of these things are wonderful things, and we need to just take them all on. I say. I got my
cell phone stack, or, and it's a, it's a really quick question for the group. Are we, is this an information session, or are we trying to come out of this with working groups and a plan to make this happen? Yeah, that's it. Get, Something to think about. Um, I got Ben, Ted, I'm so Shirley. Shirley, and Ben. Do you, do you mind letting Shirley and Benny maybe go first? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you want to go first, Shirley? Yes, no, I, I do. I want to follow up, piggyback on what Mr. Felicia said. T-shirts were important. I'll tell you this. We, we had T-shirts that had enough is enough, and we had Benny in his wheelchair on the back of our T-shirts. And whenever Benny had to go to court, we wore our T-shirts. Whenever we had a march, we wore our T-shirts. We had got petitions. We went to the public market and stood out there um, all day and got signatures. We took those signatures downtown to the mayor's office and to um, the DA's office. At the, the, the mayor's office, we were able to get upstairs to his secretary and leave him. At the DA's office, they allowed us in the door. The security guard would not allow us to go upstairs. But they took those signatures. So um, it went on with Benny's court appearances. The judge, a black judge, I want you to know this, told Benny's attorney for us not to wear those Enough is Enough t-shirts. Because we showed up in his courtroom with his Enough is Enough t-shirts. Yeah. So, you know, things things happen. Yeah. Things happen. The t-shirts were important. But we were there. We had our, we had our marches. We had our rallies. Enough is enough. We had t-shirts. And, and we did that. And the judge was intimidated. He's a black man. He was intimidated mm -hmm. with our Enough is Enough t-shirts. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I just want to... I just wanted to say that um, I've been hearing about this thing. And I just wondered, was it a, uh, a uh, uh, you know, review board in Buffalo? Because when the young man was uh, the incident that happened there, when the young man was arrested and uh, and beaten and everything, they it seemed like they were so quick. They uh, uh, fire. I mean, I don't know if they fired this guy, but they laid him off or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? And it was just so quickly. You understand what I'm saying? They responded to the incident quickly. So I was just wondering, was it a review board in Buffalo? You know, it was just a response of the people. Uh, it was like 10 I mean, I don't know. I, I was just, just throwing that out there because yeah. I'm like, you know, because they they was on top of them officers yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. I mean, I, I was I mean how can I, what can I learn from that? So, so they suspended six officers, and one was yeah, suspended without pay. Yeah, because and that was on the media. Right, okay. and they're, they're under investigation. Mm -hmm. And um, the one that was suspended without pay was the one that was really doing a lot of the, the yeah. horrible stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Buffalo has a review board, but one thing your lawyer told me the other day was the fact that the police came down quickly, severely, removed that guy from the force, suspended him without pay, yes. you know, makes a statement to the community. It says exactly. the police force will and can hold itself accountable if it wants to. Yeah. But it, it usually, in this town, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's, that's right. It's right. I'm going to have to leave. I got a car problem out there. Uh -huh. the, the engine revs up and it doesn't want to stop. Uh -oh. It just started tonight, right, Elder White? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, and I, and I want to get that, get home safely before it's dark out there. Yeah. Okay. I don't yes. Kill myself. Yeah. Yes. But uh, I, I came here because uh, Ted and I talked, and we wanted to form an alliance and coalition, broad alliance and coalition, relative to getting this uh, independent civilian review process on the road. And informing people about it, so I'm, I'm open to any follow-up meetings uh, that you'll have in order to plan and prepare, so we can make a go of this whole process. Yes. And I, I just think the next step, basically, is is uh, preparing and planning with the, um, the petition strategy, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the May 20th uh, meeting at City Hall, and getting the speakers together and everything and also getting in contact with the city council persons yeah. and seeing where they, they're after that. Mm -hmm. So if, I think we need a follow-up meeting right away. Okay. 
And thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, Reverend you. Stewart, I'd like thank to say this did. We did a form of alliance because right. we're fighting for the same thing. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, anytime we're, uh, we're going to be together on this, no matter what, because we're looking at the same uh, picture. Mm -hmm. You understand? We're going forward with this. You understand? Um, Reverend White? Yes. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. Yes. And, uh, you know, we will get together as something. Both of you guys, uh, uh, you know, I love you and I do believe God is in my life. Amen. You understand? So, uh, you know, I think that we are uh, we are together on this thing and we're going to work towards it. Thank you. This is what we're going to do. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank you for coming out. Uh, Benny on stack. He said it. No, I said okay. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. And then, uh, okay. And yeah, and what was said about like you know twenty people making eight phone calls each being nothing. Uh, I mean, I yeah. Well, okay. Or, not enough. Not enough. Or wording. Or we Sorry, but yeah, sorry, sorry. what? Uh, Glad you on fire, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, going back to like petitions and such, the point of petitions is not just to, it's not just aimed at the people addressed in the text of the uh, of the petition. It's also I I, the target. The petition is also the people. They are asking to sign the petition because you know, just you know twenty activists sitting in a room and then going out and doing whatever aren't going to you know change the system unless what they're doing is getting lots and lots of other people involved because you know we outnumber you know we as you know the people outnumber those in power. And when we realize this and we organize together, we have more power than they do when we work together. And we need to build those numbers. We, we need to organize you know, the masses of people because nobody is going to free the masses of people except the masses of people themselves. And so just focusing on, like, a small group of people, you know, targeting elected officials isn't going to do anything. We need to, we need to, you know, get a mass mobilization. We need to get people, other people mobilizing other people as well. Mm -hmm. I have Sylvia and Danya. Mm -hmm. Well, just another negative thing. Uh, in response to that, I agree with you. Um, we do. We are more, many more, and uh, that is why um, they have the police. That I mean, they know that. They know uh, that we could have power. Uh, and they have to um, destroy it. One question, is there actually an existing petition? No, we have the Greek word. We have to create one. Okay. So we need somebody to create the petition. Well, I would think that Reverend Stewart might be he's the one person to ask about. I mean, he's a leader. Yeah. Okay. No, I was just thinking, if, you know, we talked about uh, petitions. Anybody can start a petition. Mm -hmm. Get a piece of paper says, we would like, we the people, the community, the Rochester, all of us want a city review board. What do you think about that? Would you be willing to sign this piece of paper? We can start that today. We can start it tomorrow. You can write it at your house, take it to your church, and just start getting names. Because it's important that we start this right away. And then when we come back together, we could just go from uh, 
maybe changing the top board. Well, if you have the names, that means that people are ready. People are saying, yes, I want this too. We shouldn't have to, I mean, I'm just saying that maybe, you know, from Interfaith Gospel Tabernacle, I'll, I'll speak for that one, that I, I'll write a heading and make sure it's at my church and make sure everybody signs it, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> but ask everybody to sign it. Start it right away. Whatever it is we can do. It's yes. about the city review board. We know that. That's what we want. So we can just put that on a piece of paper and then begin to ask people to sign it. That's it for me. I got that. Thank you. Not only that, a lot of people are on Facebook. Yes. Somebody who send it. And then they send it to their friends. We yeah. have signatures and no Oh, yeah, we, we spoke mm -hmm. about that earlier. Immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sign the petition on there. So, uh, hmm? um, so Jeremy's on stack. I just want to. I don't, I don't, I was just taking a stack. I don't know if there was anybody who was facilitating this, but it sounds like we have a proposal, which is to just start moving on the petition. Do, do we want to do like maybe five more minutes of just brainstorming or That's thoughts and then we that can... I didn't want to kind of talk about the petition. That I, I'm not, yep. I'm, like, I'm not completely clear on, like, I would... I, I don't like signing anything unless I know exactly what I'm signing. Well, you see, that's when you, you have a monologue of what we support and what we're we doing. Anyone can say, you know, you have to be a voice of the people. I can't just sell you a dream unless I can talk to you. Right. Like, like I tell mean, you, Jeremy, I'm, I'm having you sign this petition because we want like independent. The devil, like the devil is in the details. We, I mean, we might say we have a, you know, an independent review board and they, you know, they, they slap that, that that title on it and then, you know, when it gets implemented, somehow it gets stripped of its power. And, that's what I mean. I don't, I don't understand the like the ins and outs of that. And if I had like a document that I could see, well, that's what we do. We don't, we don't, we don't send, we don't enough, enough. And when we get together and something up, we let the people know what our objective is. You know, even for Penny, we had when we did for the six year here. Here's something to read for you, so you can read. Let me tell you, I have to be self-explanatory to tell you what you're going to sign. Then I'm going to give you something so you can read it by yourself if you want to change. So this is what we did. So before we even go out and ask, you know, have it, we, we go out to the public, we have something to give out to you. This is what we're looking for. So this is automatically going to be there. You know, why are we doing it and who's all there and the support groups here. This is what we're doing. So that answers your question. Um, the Something else that that seems weird to me. So, like, as a group, are we going to send somebody to like city council, and then like that person's going to going to talk to the city council member? Do you come back to us? No, you have a, the city council. He was telling me, let me just get out here. Um, on the twentieth, you call in before five o'clock, and you can speak on the panel to view your opinion, mm -hmm. how you feel, what you want, what you're looking for. You, you can do that minutes. only at, before five o'clock. On the 20th, the day of the city council meeting, uh, May 20th. That's on May 20th. If you got something to say about what you want to do, how what we looking for, that's what you support. That's what you have to do. Call the city council and say, I want to speak tonight uh, on the city council meeting at XYZ. So they have to honor that. So that's what you got to do for that. They have your opinion. To be voiced. And that was one of the things that he was telling us uh, on the 20th. Before 5 o'clock, you got to call in there. You want to be on the panel to speak. Give us like the rest of this. All right, I got Shirley, Ted. You still been waiting? Yeah, I'm. Shirley, Ted, and Kathy. Take myself off. Sure. I take myself off. Okay. Does that mean it's my turn? Um, so yeah, I was thinking for the last maybe like uh, 15 minutes we could talk about things that we can do individually, things we could start to think about collectively. Um, I think if, P if people want to call their, their city council members and have a conversation about this, do it. If you want to sign up and come to May 20th and speak, do it. If you want to come and just stand in solidarity or sit in solidarity at that hearing on May 20th, come and do it. I passed out this great thing called uh, Band the Box in Rochester. Yes, yes. Everybody know what Band the Box is? Anybody here doesn't know what Band the Box is? You don't. Know. You don't know. Okay. So, so, you, can't, you can't check off of the uh, conviction that they yeah, so anybody who would like, I think it's, uh, the ordinance would require the city of Rochester's contractors and private employers located in the city 
to delay cons uh, consideration of a job applicant's conviction history until after the employer conducts an initial interview or makes a conditional offer of employment. Um, so many times, uh, D-Train, who was here earlier, uh, spoke about this at our panel, These Streets of Speaking, where, you know, he had been on uh, multiple interviews, 14, 15 interviews in like two months, mm -hmm. got seven callbacks, and he had to check the box saying that he, had a convic he was a convicted, you know, he had a conviction record. Mm -hmm. And he just put the, the, the you know, the, the, the number of the, the thing that he was convicted of. He didn't put what he did, he just put the number. When he went in for the second interview and they were like, what is this thing? He said, oh, well, I got an assault charge on a parole officer, but I didn't actually assault. And, and before he even was able to explain what happened, they said, sorry, you got to go. I'm not going to hire you. Yeah. And, and in New York State, there's certain protocols that employers have to follow, especially with people with conviction records, because it's, uh, it falls into discrimination law, right? So if you check that box and you go get a job and they say you check the box and they throw out your application... That's, that's a no-no. That's illegal. That's against New York State employer-employee law. But nobody enforces it. Nobody cares about it, right? So this ordinance would actually make it illegal to put that box in applications right. in the city of Rochester. Right. The onus is on employers, not employees, to change what they're doing, right? Um, and, you know, basically, you've done the time. We, we, we all deserve to have a fair shot at getting an employment, you know? Um, so there's a huge coalition of groups supporting this at the bottom here. Uh, found out about it maybe a month ago. Uh, it sounds great. They're actually bringing a proposal, an ordinance to city council. They're asking people to come out and just be there in solidarity. Um, I, I think there's a way you can call in, like Pastor Stewart was talking about, and you can you can actually get on the, the panel or you know get before the city council and speak to why this is important to you. That's it. That's good. I'll be there. Uh, I think uh, I think that's good. Uh, this is an opening of all doors to let you know that even banning the box, you know what I mean, uh, for people. I just all those who here are able to come out on the 13th. Let's show it. Let's show other groups that we're interested. And then we also got a chance to speak to someone that you do. Hey, listen, we want this independent panel coming up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See, we look for you to come up. So this is really good. So. I just hope that everybody who is able to come out on the 13th, be there on the 13th, you know? I want to be there. I want to be there. I mean, we got to be there. We, we got to be there. Right? Okay, I got to give it a go. But like I say, we're going to get out of the box. We got next Tuesday. Uh, like I say, um, uh, the lead, uh, uh, they, they left cards at the Christian uh, Leadership Academy. It's up here at the Christian Membership. Uh, they're going to meet uh, on a Saturday. You know, that's one of the things we're looking for, you know what I mean? Uh, between now and Saturday, I come up with a, 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 a petition to give to the leadership of different churches. Come on. If it's, it's for all, don't, 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 do, don't be about it if you can't do about it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to make sure that on Saturday when we go to the meeting that I can have some petition that they can give to the churches, okay? If we're going to start this... Yeah, here's some cards. If you want some uh, for um, United uh, uh, Christian Leadership Ministry, there's some cards to call to contact them. They'll be up here on this counter here and so forth. So we just do that, and by Saturday, I can at least have a petition so they can take to the different churches. You know what I mean? If you're there and you help present it, let's show what we need to do. You know? So, Kathy, so you're committing yourself to doing a petition? I'm going to commit myself to, to make sure that we go into this meeting. One of the things that they can have, you know, under this independent study and also uh, that we can have a petition so some of these pastors can take some of them to their congregation. You know what I mean? Well, I'm right? sorry, what meeting are you taking the petitions to? The 13th. On the 13th. No, no, not on the 13th, before the 13th. Oh, they, they, uh, they're having a meeting. With, on uh, Saturday. On Saturday. Right? So, yes, yes, yes. So, Reverend Stewart, so, you know, so if they, you know, if you're going to be about it, don't just talk about it, be about it. So, when I go there with the petition, so y'all can take to your church for your parishioners to sign them, then you're going to be a be about the business. I got, I got Benny on stack, I got Kathy on stack, and, um, okay, what's your name right here? Okay, I want to say this right here. I agree with, uh, what's your name, ma'am? What's your name? Elaine. Elaine. I kind of agree with Elaine. I think that uh, 
Reverend Stewart should go ahead on and uh, do that uh, thing, you understand, because, you know, he done brought that thing up, you understand, so I feel that he should uh, uh, get that petition, uh, write it out or whatever he's going to do, you understand, because that, as you said, I said, you know, because I agree with you that he's the, like the leader of that thing, not saying that he's the leader, but he didn't want to start that thing, so let him put that proposal down on that um on that, uh, you know what I'm saying? I can't even talk petition, right. It was a petition, yeah. right? And uh, uh, let him go ahead and, and start passing it out. And we all look at it and see how we feel about it. Well, you you know, understand what I'm saying? Because yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah, fighting yeah. for the cause, but I think that, yeah, he should go ahead and do that. But my question is, just to say that uh, a petition is just a heading. Mm -hmm. And the heading only say that we support independent uh, talent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you say we support the community, that tells everybody in the community. <coughs> if, if we want to come in a group, if you don't know the ideal, let me work it. You know, let me, let, let's come together. This is what I got to show. It's not just an individual. We spoke openly, so now let's say, hey, Reverend, uh, uh, Pastor Stewart, this is what I came up with. This is a, it's just like any other thing. It's not an individual thing. You know what I mean? Because if I know how to do something, why am I going to sit back and I know how to do something? Well, listen, I was just brainstorming and I came up with this, okay? Now, can you present this? It's not because what he do, but he's bringing it to as a whole, as a body, as unity that we all can come together. If I can do this and show that I'm taking one step, that's another step that we don't have to take because we're united in what we do. I got your call. I'm feeling you. You feeling me? Okay, I'm feeling you, okay? This is done. But we're just not looking at individual. We're looking at as a body. We are a body right now, right? We're a body for a cause. And if I can come up with something and present it, boom, I did something, okay? Now, that's one last step we have to do. Now, what we come to, it's just like I say, when we come to a format of everything that we're doing for the community, that's one thing. All we want to do is present this out here. Let's start working together. That's what I'm saying to you, Benny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you first. I still think Pastor Stewart ought to go ahead and put that thing together, though. Pastor Stewart, that, that's why Pastor Stewart came here, so we can come right. together I'm, to unite ourselves with one another. You know what I mean? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I understand that. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one point is that if Reverend Stewart is computer literate, which I am not, mm -hmm. then he can put the petition together. But we've got to have somebody who's computer literate, who knows how to put a petition, and what where to put it out on the computer, and what information to put on it. Starting a petition like that is fine, and then you can get names and emails of people who are interested, and then you could we could start a real movement, you know. That's where Ted coming in. I can yeah, do with, this without with, Ted and Mitch know how to do this online. Right. Oh no, let's right. not take this thing together. You don't know, Ted, you, I can discuss this already with Ted. Okay. You know what I mean? So like when it comes down for online petition, know how to do it, he knows that that's what you do. This is why we got a body. This is what I can't do, you can do, right? What you can't do, I can do. That's right. Right? So that's what I'm looking at. So we know what we're looking for. Okay. We know what that. The, the grassroots is just like, if we're going to get support from different churches here, it's a plain petition. Okay. But when we go out to the public and then we really want the eyesight on things and, and something to do, then that's what we do. Alright, just get back on stack. Okay, uh, I'm gone. Okay, bye. Alright. Bye, Kat. Thank you. Bye.